Welcome to Electron Line. Our next topic in the topic of friction is called the journal bearing. Now the journal bearing is also known as the plane bearing or the solid bearing. All it is is a solid axle that rotates inside a housing. And there's friction between the solid axle here and where it's rotating inside of. Now we have to take into assumption that there's little to no lubrication. If we put a lot of lubrication in there, there's different kinds of dynamics. There's the fluid flow we have to take it into account, and also the rotation speed will have a, an effect on the friction between the bearing, the solid bearing, and the housing. So in this case, there's little to no lubrication, so we make it simpler. What happens when the bearing begins to rotate, and here I have a bigger picture of it, so here the bearing is rotating, it makes contact with the housing right here and initially it causes the bearing to ride up the side because there's a coefficient of static friction until it gets high enough where it begins to slip. Once it begins to slip, there's a singular point of contact right here where we have the normal force in this direction, we have the reaction force in this direction and then we have the friction force which can be drawn either over here or over there. We can find the angle phi between the normal force and the reaction force by taking the arc tangent of the coefficient of kinetic friction because after all the bearing will be rotating and sliding. We take into account the kinetic friction, not the static friction. Also typically attached to the bearing is some sort of wheel and what we're trying to do here is trying to find the moment on the wheel due to the friction. Also what we need to keep in mind is if we sum up all the forces in the y direction, the sum of all the forces in the y direction, which should add up to zero, well we have the reaction force pointing up, which is positive, minus the weight on the axle, which is downward. Now the weight can be both the weight of the axle and the load on the axle, or simply just the weight of the axle. But this shows that the reaction force is equal to the magnitude of the weight. Next what we want to do is come up with an equation that calculates the friction force relative to the reaction force and the angle phi, which can be obtained like this. We can see here that since R, the reaction force, is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, we can say that the friction force, force friction, therefore is equal to the reaction force times the sine of the angle phi. Now to find the moment, the moment caused by the friction force. Notice the friction force acts through a radius of R1, which is the radius of the axle. So the moment caused by the friction force is equal to the friction force times the moment R1, and so this becomes R times R1 times the sine of phi. And of course that is the moment that's on the wheel here caused by the friction here on the axle. Now if you want to apply a force, if you want to apply a normal or a force to the wheel to cause it to turn to overcome the friction force, we can then say that the moment is also going to be equal to the force applied to the wheel here times the moment arm or the radius of the wheel which we call R2. So it's going to be F times R2 and obviously these two have to be equal but opposite in direction. So the friction force will try to slow down the moment, so it's pointing in this direction, so it's going to be a counterclockwise moment, and the force here which causes a moment on the wheel to overcome the friction force is going to be a negative moment because it's a clockwise direction. So you can say here that the moment here is a negative of the friction force, so moment total, the total moment is going to be equal to the negative m of this plus the moment caused by the friction, and that is going to be equal to zero. So essentially you could say that the force applied over here times the moment arm or the radius of the wheel is going to be equal to the reaction force times the moment arm of the, of the axle, which is R1, times the sine of phi. And there's two ways of expressing the sum of the moments, or you could simply say the moment caused by the friction can be calculated as such. And so that gives you a good idea of how to work with journal bearings or, in other words, how to deal with solid bearings. And that's how it's done.